Okay, now is when we bring in exhibits B and C, a report showing online shopping rapidly eating into traditional retailing and the soaring Kiwi dollar. To talk about how shops here can try to keep their market share, uh, James Gilbert from e-retail specialist Solutionists and Barker's Creative Services Manager Duncan Grieve. Welcome to you both. James, I'm going to start with you. Why is there such a disparity in price? Um, I mean, that's really a difficult question for me to answer because, I mean, we're e-retail specialists, maybe. Duncan? Duncan, can you help us out here? Well, I guess to a certain extent, I mean, you know, the answer was in your question. The, the, the Kiwi dollar has uh, had an impact uh, on, on the accessibility of products from the US and, and uh, other overseas markets. But, you know, for us at Barker's, we're in a relatively... Uh, yeah, we're lucky in that we manufacture our own products, so you might be able to get something similar over, uh, overseas, but the, you know, the, the style, the, the cut, the, um, the quality in particular, yeah, we back ourselves that we can compete with overseas uh, companies on that. Plus, you know, having stores on the ground here means that you know, if you want to exchange it, you can pop down to your local store rather than having to ship it halfway around the world. Okay, go back to you now, James. So are you saying you think that price is fair? Using that All Blacks jersey as an example? Yeah, look, I, I think um, New Zealand retailers need to be looking at what, um, you know, what their price to their competitors overseas are actually offering, the shipping, all that sort of thing. I mean, they have to accept that they're in a global market now and they have to compete that way. But, I mean, they have, um, they have all the same expenses they've always had, so I think they have to be fair to, to their business. What's your advice then for New Zealand retailers? How do they compete, particularly um, if, the, if the price isn't one area they can? Well, I think they have to have uh, you know, an online store that's as good as their counterparts. They have to be looking at the pricing and shipping costs. I mean, they have to just wear what they can to, to stay price competitive. Um, they've still got the brand name from New Zealand. They've still got the trust in the, in the existing customer relationships that they have, so they've got a bit of an advantage there. And I think they're just going to have to keep innovating like we do in New Zealand and, and stay, try and stay on top of it that way. Do you find that people care about the brand and the trust? Are, are they loyal? Or do you think we're going to find that people are decreasingly loyal when they see the, these big pay differences? I think New Zealanders are loyal people anyway. Um, there's, there's, you know, there's always going to be a little bit of movement, particularly when people are getting excited and it's a bit of a fad like it is at the moment to, to buy stuff overseas. But I think you know, they'll come back to the brands they trust because, as Duncan alluded to, the quality's there, you know, the speed of delivery is there. Duncan, what do you do at Barker's to try and compete? I know you've got a website, don't you? Yeah, we do. I mean, and we actually got into online real retail relatively early. We've been we've been in the space for four years now, and we've seen four straight years of growth. But it hasn't been at the expense of of our physical retail stores. So, I mean, what we do is, is as Jane said, we we try and make sure that our our website is is state of the art. If you if you to go, go to Barker's online now, you'll see a website that we feel comfortable you know, competing against any website in the world in terms of its functionality and the way that it displays our product. But also, you know, the there's still elements of, you know, I feel like we've got a big competitive advantage over other overseas retailers in that, like I said, the returns process is easier and we do have a relationship with our customers. We're not looking to sell one cheap product and, and then that be the end of it. We, we, we've had, a, you know, some of our VIPs have been with us for 20 or 30 years. I mean, you can come on and have a, uh, you know, and, and buy one jersey or one particular product, but it takes a long time to kind of build that relationship and uh, uh, equally to, to kind of sever it. It's, it's not something that can be done overnight. The Kiwi dollar must be a concern for, for businesses like you. Um, what do you do? Are you constantly thinking of how you can compete more? Do you have to be aware of that? Because, I mean, figures are showing that more and more people are wanting to shop online now, I guess, for convenience as well as price. Yeah, I mean, the Kiwi dollar is a concern to a certain extent and, and the fact that, you know, overseas retailers largely don't pay GST, which, again, is a competitive advantage to them. But we we really believe it at Barker's, and I think this is probably the case for a number of New Zealand retailers, that our product is simply better. We work super hard on, on uh, making sure that that we have something different that there and that it's... You know, it's targeted at the local market uh, in a way that, you know, something from America, I mean, we're on season. If you're buying from the Northern Hemisphere, they're in summer right now. So it's, th there are 
there are certainly disadvantages for us, but I think they're far outweighed by, by what we gain from being on the ground here and amongst the, the people we're targeting. Duncan Grieve, James Gilbert, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you.